Hello guys, today we'll be starting a series of video in Autonomic Nervous System Pharmacology and we'll be going through this following outline. So we'll look at the introduction to the ANS itself, then we'll talk about cholinergic neurotransmission. We'll mention the sites of drug actions as we discuss, as we draw the diagram and show you guys the site of drug actions. Then the receptor locations and their actions, that's when the receptors are stimulated, what actions do they carry out? Then the mechanism of actions of receptor stimulation. Some receptors are GI couple, GS couple, GQ coupled, and some require second messengers. We'll discuss it and talk about how they carry about the actions. Then after that, we'll talk about the adrenergic neurotransmission, the site of drug actions too there, the receptor locations and the actions, and also the mechanism of action of adrenergic re receptor stimulation. Then finally, we'll look at glaucoma, the pathophysiology of closed angle and open angle glaucoma, and then the pharmacological intervention. So let's go now to the introduction. So introduction to ANS pharmaco to ANS rather. Before we talk about the pharmacology. So let's look at this algorithm of the nervous system. So the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain, the brain stem and the spinal cord. The brain stem is just like a connection between the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is subdivided into the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. This one has to do with the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves with the afferents and efferent fibers. And the autonomic nervous system is divided into the parasympathetic, which is a, a, a we, we get parasympathetic responses in times of rest and sympathetic nervous system. These responses come to play most times in states of flight, fright, and fight. All right. So let's look at the peripheral nervous system now. That's an analogy I would like to use. Uh, the analogy of the power plant, uh, where I call the source of electric power. Let's say this is a, this is a power plant. The this uh, yellow line here, it's like a wire, PHCN wire or NEPA wire, anyone you call it. So there are some there are some wires that run straight from the power plant and they go straight to the house it wants to innovate. It's hypothetical though, just for illustration purposes. So the ones that run straight from the power plant, the power plant stands for the CNS. The ones that run straight from the power plant, straight to the houses, this ones are majorly of the somatic nervous system they don't need to branch at any junction they just run straight from cns to the organ or the cell they want to innovate but for the ans on the other hand this here has to do with the ans so the ans has to send the fibers as the neurons first to a transformer then from the transformer the house gets innovated. The transformer is sometimes called a ganglia. So from the transformer, that's from the ganglia, we could have innovations that goes to the house it wants to innovate or the organ or the cell or the tissue it wants to innovate. So the systems that require a step down transformer, as I'll call it, that require a junction before they get to the organ they want to innovate, this is majorly of the autonomic nervous system. So let's explain it now in a more detailed diagram. So here you have a picture of um, the neuronal transmission from the CNS to the periphery. So you could see now that every new neuron shown in the periphery mark their origin one way or the other from the central nervous system. So let's discuss this last one first before I talk about the autonomic nervous systems properly. Now you can see this one running straight from the CNS. It runs and runs and runs and innovates the organ. It runs and the skeletal muscle. This is of the somatic neuron as I've explained earlier. So now let's go straight to the autonomic. Let's start starting from the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. What I wrote here as PANS. Now the parasympathetic Sympathetic autonomic nervous system, they take their origin from the craniosacral segments of the CNS. Cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, and sacral nerves, I think S2 to S4, 
S2 to S4. So watch, the their wires run, long wires run to synapse at the ganglia. So as you can see, to just a small difference between the parasympathetic and the, the, the sympathetic, as you can see, they have longer preganglionic fiber. Preganglionic pre fibers means the fibers, that's the neuronal fibers, come in before the ganglia. So they have a longer preganglionic fi fiber compared to the sympathetic. So let's finish with the parasympathetic before we go to the, to the sympathetic. So the parasympathetic, they run their wires here, synapse at the ganglia, and from the ganglia, another neuron is sent to effect or to synapse or yes to release a new trans transmitter that will affect the cells or the organs it wants to innervate particularly the cardiac tissues smooth muscles and then glands the sympathetic on the other hand send they send preganglionic fibers they're kind of short because they are the ganglia for sympathetic is closer to the cns whereas for parasympathetic the ganglia is closer to the effector cells so it sends the fibers to the ganglia here. so the ganglia sends a long postganglionic fiber to the organs it wants to innervate also the cardiac tissue smooth muscles and the glands i drew two types of sympathetic here to for a reason which i'll explain soon now we have an organ here called the adrenal medulla the adrenal medulla has the same embryonic origin as the autonomic ganglia. So they, so they seem to somewhat behave like the sympathetic system. But the major difference between the adrenal medulla and the ganglia is this. Within the adrenal medulla, there's an enzyme that's able to convert no adrenaline to adrenaline. We'll talk about it in details during the adrenergic neurotransmission sec section but but just to mention it here the name of the enzyme is phenyl amine n methyl transferase it's a mouthful i'll spell it in the coming class on adrenergic neurotransmission so let's start from this now so you see the fiber coming out of here it synapses at the ganglia again a long postganglionic fiber goes and brings out no adrenaline i'll come to the neurotransmitters shortly and this one also comes here and does the same thing bringing out ach and i'll explain why then for this the adrenal medulla brings out adrenaline into the bloodstream now because adrenaline flows from one organ to the to to its site of action in the bloodstream is usually called a neural hormone so we'll talk to uh, we will we will we will we'll, we'll talk about that soon then another point to note is this for all the neurons coming fresh from the cns the neurotransmitter that they release at their terminal is acetylcholine ach acetylcholine acetylcholine and acetylcholine here so we could boldly say that all the neurons coming from the cns are cholinergic fiber so this is a cholinergic fiber so is this so is this this and also this now for the parasympathetic the neuron coming from the ganglia that's a postganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine also at its neuronal terminal why for the sympathetic majority of the neurons release no adrenaline which is also called no epinephrine just a certain few the ones that that innervate the sweat glands and the piloerector muscle they bring out acetyl Choline. For this, I've already mentioned the adrenal medulla brings out majorly adrenaline flowing in the bloodstream and tends to innovate, uh, sorry, tends to stimulate its receptors, which we'll talk about later. Now, for acetylcholine, acetylcholine can be received by two types of receptor, a nicotinic receptor or a muscarinic receptor. Now, for every cholinergic fiber that brings out acetylcholine coming fresh from the cns they are mostly welcomed by the nicotinic type of receptors now i differentiated it between okay there are, there are two types we have nn and nm 
M just stands for muscle and N stands for nervous tissue or neuronal tissue. So since these are neuronal tissues, the type of nicotinic receptors that would receive them is the NN, 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 and NN. Why this is a skeletal muscle, it will be worked on by NM. So this is called the neuromuscular junction. We'll also talk about this more in later lectures. Now, after the ganglia, acetylcholine can be welcomed by the muscarinic type of receptors. So the nicotinic receptors welcomes all acetylcholine coming fresh from the CNS. And after the ganglia, they are welcomed by the muscarinic type of receptors. Now, let me wipe this so I could explain further for the no adrenaline. Now, no adrenaline, on the other hand, can be welcomed by two types of receptors for the sake of this lecture. Two types of receptors can be welcomed by no adrenaline, can be welcomed by either alpha receptors or beta receptors. And there are several subtypes of alpha receptors. We have alpha 1, alpha 2. And for beta receptor, we have beta 1 and beta 2. And also there's a beta 3, but it's not of clinical relevance for your level now. So, but no, ad no adrenaline, it's not, does not get to beta 2 receptors because beta 2 receptors are not innervated. There's, there's a reason I'm, I, am, I am highlighting this now. I'll explain it in future lectures. So the type of receptors that would majorly receive no adrenaline from the postganglionic fiber of this sympathetic neurotransmission is alpha-1, alpha-2, and beta-1, present on cardiac tissue, smooth muscles, and also gland. While adrenaline, on the other hand, let me wipe this, talk about adrenaline. Adrenaline, on the other hand, can also be received by alpha and beta receptors. Okay, adrenaline can be received by alpha and also beta receptor. They're received by alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta 1, beta 2. Beta 2 receptors are not innervated. So adrenaline, since it's flowing inside the bloodstream, can get to the locations of beta 2 receptors and also stimulate them. So this summarizes the diagram here. Let's go to the next slide to just summarize what we just said. So the key points I said was the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system takes the origin from the cranial sacral segments of the CNS, the cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, by sacral nerves S2 to S4. The Sympathetic takes takes their origin from thoracolumbar segments of the CNS T1 to T12, L1 to L5, and all neuronal fibers coming from the CNS are cholinergic, and the acetylcholine released at their terminals are usually received by nicotinic type of receptors NM or NM, depending on where it's found. The adrenal medulla and the autonomic ganglia have the same embryonic origin. They all come from the neural crest cells. And lastly, acetylcholine have nicotinic re receptors, preganglionic and muscarinic receptors, postganglionic. No adrenaline released from the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic are received by alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta 1 re receptors. While adrenaline, a neural hormone flowing in the bloodstream from the adrenal medulla, is releasing into the bloodstream, as I said, and it simulates alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors. So in the next video, we'll talk about cholinergic neurotransmission. Thank you.